Good morning. My name is Chris Ndikumana. I'm the host of the Kanguka Broadcast. You are about to listen to today's broadcast translated from Kirundi to English. Be blessed. Today's Monday and I'd like to remind our new listeners that Kanguka is a Kirundi word, the language of Burundi, and it means wake up. If you're listening to the broadcasts through the radio or if you're receiving them via WhatsApp, please be aware that you can access all the broadcasts at any time by visiting the Kanguka website kanguka.com or by visiting the Kanguka English channel on YouTube or by downloading the Kanguka mobile app on your phone. Just type Kanguka, that's K-A-N-G-U-K-A. I hope you had a great weekend. As usual every Monday, I want to first thank everyone who prays for this ministry. May, I am, bless everyone who prays for the Kanguka team, and don't forget to pray for our Kanguka partners who support us financially because they also need your prayers. Pray for us, and we're praying for you too, and may all the glory be to God. Every Monday, I like to remind you about the guiding principles of Kanguka. The first principle is to accept the will of God, even if it's different from our own will. The second, is to pray every day. And the third, it's forbidden to complain, instead we must give thanks in everything. Today I'm going to talk about the first principle which is to accept the will of God, even if it's different from our own will. This morning I want us to understand that we have been created by God, and if you know that you have been created, then you must understand that your Creator had a purpose when He made you. To better understand this, think about an object that has been created. Let's take the example of a Mercedes car. The person who manufactured this car had specific objectives. Mercedes cars are not produced just for no reason because manufacturing these cars is quite costly. The car manufacturer, of course, wants to generate profits. But in addition to these financial objectives, the car manufacturer also has precise objectives concerning how these cars should function. These cars were created in a specific manner. If you press one pedal, the car stops. If you press another pedal, the car moves forward. The person who designed this car did so with the idea that if you press in a certain place, the car will move, and if you press somewhere else, the car will stop. If you turn the steering wheel to the left, the car turns left. If you turn it to the right, the car turns right. In other words, the car must follow the operating mode established by its creator. We need to understand that human beings have also been created. Just like a Mercedes car has a manufacturer who created it, we too have have a creator. We must understand that the one who created us had a purpose when he made us. There were certain expectations he had for us. The manufacturer of Mercedes cars must test his vehicles before putting them on the market. If during a test, turning the steering wheel to the left makes the car turn right, the car manufacturer will not be pleased at all. He can't put that car on the market because it still doesn't operate as he intended. He wants the car to respond to the direction of the steering wheel. But if the wheel turns one way and the car goes the opposite way, he can't rejoice because something is wrong. He'll seek to find the cause of the problem so he can correct it. The same applies to us. God has certain thoughts for us. He has a specific specific plan for us, but often our actions are contrary to God's objectives. That's why we must accept God's will even if it's different from ours. Perhaps we want to turn right when He wants us to turn left. We need to first discover where He wants us to turn and understand what He wants us to do. If we don't act accordingly, we cannot please God, and He cannot bless us. This is why we often face many problems as a consequence of our disobedience. If a person has already decided to accept God's will even if it's different from their own, they will embrace God's will. To better understand this, you should first grasp the verse I'm sharing with you this morning. In Isaiah 43 verse 7, God says, Everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory, I have formed him. Yes, I have made him. I want everyone listening to me to know that you have been created. You must understand that you have been created for the glory of God. The rest of the verse says, I have formed him. Yes, I have made him. God created us. He made us. We have been created by the hand of God. Just as someone had a specific purpose when manufacturing the Mercedes car, God also had a particular objective when he created us. In verse 7, we read that he created us for his glory. If we want God to be glorified through us, we must do the things for which we were created. We must obey God. We must go where God wants us to go, and we must must become what God wants us to become. This is why I often say that we must accept God's will even if it's different from ours because we seek not our own joy or honor, but we desire the glory of our Creator. The one who created us had a purpose, and we must understand why He created us. You must know where He wants you to be, and what He wants you to become, and you must strive to become the person your Creator wants you to be. That's why we must seek to know His thoughts, His will. What does He want us to do? Where does He want us to go? How does He want us to be? This is why we must humble ourselves and pray so that we can become what our Creator wants us to be.
We are now in the teaching portion of the broadcast. Last Friday, we concluded our study of the Book of Kings. This study lasted quite a while because this book contains two major parts, 1 Kings and 2 Kings. As usual, when we finish studying a book from the Bible, we move on to teaching on a specific theme. And after this new teaching we will study another book from the New Testament. We will continue progressively until we have covered the entire Bible. Today, we're going to start a new teaching called, Deliverance from Jealousy. Many people are aware of the existence of jealousy, but I'd like to show you that jealousy is a very dangerous spirit, one that is fearsome because it can attack both the body, the soul, and the spirit. You must understand that jealousy can utterly destroy your life. Jealousy is one of the works of the flesh mentioned in Galatians 5 verse 20. There are the works of the spirit and the works of the flesh. The works of the flesh are numerous and they include, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and things like these. Jealousy is one of the works of the flesh, and we will talk about it in this new teaching. We need to understand that jealousy is very dangerous, and it can even destroy your life if you fail to realize that there is a spirit lurking behind jealousy. Jealousy kills, it destroys families, it can hinder you from reaching heaven, and it can drive you to do things you should never have done. You need to know that jealousy is caused by a spirit. There is a spirit hiding behind jealousy. So, I want you to understand that jealousy is highly dangerous. It's jealousy that caused the very first human death. The first humans to inhabit the earth were Adam and Eve, and they had children. Their first two children were Cain and Abel. Abel was the first human to experience death, and his death was caused by jealousy. I will speak about this today, and I will continue tomorrow. But before I get into the details of this teaching, today I want us to understand that jealousy is a very dangerous thing that can drive you to commit acts you never imagined doing. Through this teaching, I want you to realize that if you can't control your jealousy, then your jealousy will control you. Jealousy affects many people. It doesn't only affect non-believers because we will see that even children of God are affected. We will see through the word of God that jealousy is everywhere. It affects all nations and tribes. It is found among Christians and non-Christians alike. Jealousy is a formidable weapon that Satan often uses. As I mentioned earlier, the first human being who died on this earth died because of jealousy. In Genesis 4 verse 3, it is written that Cain offered the Lord an offering of the fruits of the earth. In verse 4, we are told that Abel offered the firstborn of his flock and their fat to the Lord, and the Lord looked favorably upon Abel and his offering. This means that Abel's offering pleased God. The fact that this verse mentions that God looked favorably upon Abel proves that Abel's offering pleased God. But verse 5 states that the Lord did not look favorably upon Cain and his offering. When Cain noticed that his brother's offering had found favor with God, he became very angry, and his countenance fell. I will explain this story in more detail tomorrow. We will see that this still happens today. There is a lot of jealousy in churches. People die, families are torn apart, homes are destroyed, and churches split because of jealousy. Satan used jealousy in the time of Cain, and we will see that this jealousy led to Abel's death. But jealousy is still at work today. We will see how people always want to be the only ones appreciated. They don't want anyone else to succeed. They don't want others to be blessed. They always want to be the only ones to receive good things. Jealousy is a formidable weapon of Satan. Jealousy is like a virus that infects many people, including the children of God. I hope that by the end of this teaching, we will be delivered from jealousy so that we can walk according to the will of God. We will continue tomorrow. May I am bless you and have a great day. If you're blessed or transformed by Kanguka teachings, you can send us a WhatsApp audio on plus 2567813773337.